Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 4.7. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement in solid work setting. Now, looking at this geometry, this is a symmetric geometry. You can see the 3D model. You can see the top view, front view, and the right view. My preference is to focus on the front view. I'm going to make a 2D sketch of this view. Then I'm going to extrude that to make the 3D model. Next, I'm going to focus on these two cutouts, the left cutout and the right one. And then finally, I'm going to add fillet radius to the corners and modify the geometry. OK, with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, First thing first, we need to check unit of measurement. And you can see that we have millimeter gram second, which is a correct unit of measurement. Now, in order to start modeling this part, I click on a sketch, click on a sketch, and I choose front plane. Looking at this geometry, you can see that the right edge is kind of in line with the origin. So I use the same assumption. So I go to the right, I go up, I go to left, and maybe up to here. Now I need two circles. Click on circle command and then here I'm going to make first one and a second one. And next I go from same center point like in line with the left side I go to right and down. Okay awesome. So now we have this geometry it's time to add dimensions. Looking at the front view, you can see that the inner diameter is 12 millimeter and the outer one is 22. Also, the distance between this line and this line should be 6 millimeter. From the left side of the geometry, this corner basically, to this edge, the distance should be 110. And from that point to the right edge, it should be 125. Looking at the right view of the geometry, you can see the overall height. If you look at the right view, the distance we have from here to this top edge should be 20 meter. Okay, so we added all these dimensions. One thing that we're missing here is the relationship. We want this line, left line, to be tangent with the circle. So click on a circle, hold control, click on a line, and from the relations, choose tangent. Okay. So now our geometry is fully constrained. Everything is okay, and now we can extrude this geometry. I know that we need a fillet in this corner. I'm gonna add that later. So with this, click on extrude, click on extruded bus, and then here I'm gonna change it to mid plane because it's a symmetric geometry. And I'm gonna start with um, the smaller extrusion, which is 80 millimeter. So let's change this one to 80 and then select everything, both contours basically. Click on OK and that's it. So that's a baseline of our geometry. Of course, in this circular region, the width that we need is 100 millimeter, not 80. So what I can do, I can click on extruded bus and then here I click on model tree. I click on bus extrude one and I activate this sketch again because I already have the sketch. I can take advantage of that. This time, instead of selecting two contours, I only select this contour. Of course, with 80 millimeter width, uh, it's exactly the same. So I just change it to 100 millimeter. That's a desired width. And now you can see on both sides we have this extrusion made. Click on OK and that's it. Awesome. So now we have this geometry. Next step, we need to make cutout. So in order to do that, click on a sketch, click on a sketch and choose top surface. Because this is symmetric geometry, let's make a center line. I use this as a reference. Now let's click on rectangle command and then make a rectangle here. Because this, this is symmetric geometry, I click on a top line, hold control, click on center line and then bottom line and then from the relations I'm going to choose symmetric. The width of this should be 31 millimeters. So here, here should be 31. And the depth should be 62. This should be 62 millimeter. Okay. 
I know that we need a fillet in the corner. As I mentioned, I'm gonna add that as a last step. Click on feature, click on extrude cut, and then here, doesn't matter. You can have through all, or you can have it blind, like 100 millimeter. As long as it goes through every section, it should be fine. Click on OK, and that's it. Now, let's focus on the bust that we have on the right side. Click on a sketch, click on a sketch, and choose top surface. Here, we need two circles. Right, so that's the first one and the second one. The center point of the circle should be in line with the origin of the geometry. So I click on horizontal relationship. Now click on a smart dimension. The outer diameter should be 20 millimeter. And the distance between this edge and this edge should be three millimeter. Okay. And the distance between the center point of the circle and the right edge should be 30. Awesome. So now we have this 2D sketch fully defined. Click on OK, click on Feature, click on Extruded Cut. First, I want to cut this. And for cutting, I want to choose this section. So for the contour, basically, the intersection is important for me. And click on OK, and that's it. Now. I want to make that extrusion, the bus shape, right? So to do that, click on extruded bus. And again, I'm going to take advantage of the previous sketch. Click on model tree, click on cut extrude, and choose a sketch. And then here, you can see it's selected. The only problem is that I don't need it to be mid plane. So change it to blind. And looking at the right view, you can see that the height of this bus should be 15 millimeters. So I change this one to 15. Click on OK, and that's it. Awesome. So now we have this geometry. Let's add a fillet. First, I click on Fillet command, and then I'm going to deal with the 6 millimeter larger fillet. Change it to 6. And according to the geometry, we have three 6 millimeter fillet. The first one, of course, is in this corner. Second one should be here, and a third one should be here. Because the value of these fillets are different, one is two millimeter, one is six. So obviously, for, by looking at the drawing, we should be able to determine which fillets are larger and which one are smaller. So these three should be six millimeter. Click on OK, and that's it. Again, click on fillet command. This time, we are looking at a two millimeter fillet. First edge is this edge. Second one is here. And third one is here. Click on OK, and that's it. One point that I want to mention, that, that's an odd observation, um, but um, I want to share with you. Normally, when you have a fillet, looking at the top view, you're going to see three edges. That's the inner edge, that's the outer edge, and this edge is a result of having a fillet. But for some reason, looking at the question, I'm not seeing this edge, and that's quite odd. I don't know why this is happening. Maybe their image is not complete. Maybe they took that image when the fillet was not made. I'm not really sure about that. But, or maybe the setting is different. But if I change the setting to shaded, you can see that that edge is gone. But the problem is that other edges are also gone. But what they're showing on the top view, they only show two edges. But we know that if you have a fillet, you need three edges. So I just wanted to let you know about this. My assumption is clear. I assume what they showed on the top view is the inner circle, this one, and the outer circle. And the fillet will be added later. So I hope this is clear here. Okay. So now this is our final model, final geometry. It's time to check the total volume and see if we have the right answer or not. In the question, you can see the total volume. The total volume is 130,592 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to the model that we have and check the total volume. In the model, in order to check the total volume, we can click on Evaluate and Mass Properties. And here you can see the total volume that we have is 130,599 cubic millimeters. This is telling me that the answer is not exactly the same as what we have in the question, but it's super close. As a matter of fact, the difference between the answer we found and the answer in the question is just 7.8 cubic millimeters. Let's quickly calculate the percentage of the error here. 
Now, as I mentioned, the difference between the answer that we found and the answer in the question is only 7.8 cubic millimeters. If I calculate that, let's see, just to make sure that's the answer we found and the answer in the question is 592, it's 7.8 cubic millimeters. Now, if I divide this by a correct answer, which is 130, 592, and if I multiply this by 100, I get the percentage error. The percentage error that we have here is five thousandths of a person. This is absolutely nothing. In the exam, if you're getting to this percentage of error, definitely you can find the correct answer. The closest answer to your answer is the correct answer, of course. In the exam, they're saying that as long as you're within 1% error, you should be fine. And here you can see that we are at five thousandth of the percent error. So we should be really fine and there's no problem with the answer that we found. But still, I'm curious. I want to make sure that we are not making a mistake. And as I mentioned in a previous video, we know that this is not new. We know that in many questions, we didn't find the correct answer. Sometimes the assumptions are wrong. Sometimes the answer is wrong. Sometimes we did a reverse engineering to find the correct parameters. So this time, like the before, I want to make a quick drawing from this just to make sure that our model is correct and there's no problem with it. So let me save this model and I'm going to make a quick drawing from it. Okay, in order to make a drawing, you click on the file and make drawing from part. And then here it doesn't matter, I choose A1. And let's bring top view first. And then here I'm going to make a new layer just to change the color of the line and I'm also gonna change the font size so you can see it better change it to 14 okay everything is ready okay now let's check dimensions click on the smart dimension distance from this top line and the bottom one should be 100 this edge to this edge should be 80 this edge to this edge should be 31 and this edge to right side of the cutout 62 we know the fillet should be 2 millimeter that's right we know the distance of center point to this right edge should be 30 that's right here again same topic you see three edges but in the question we are not seeing that although we have the fillets which is quite odd but I explained my assumption. So the outer circle, this one, the second one, should be 20. And the distance between this edge and the inner edge should be 3 millimeter. And you can see it's matching the drawing. So this is good. And I think that's pretty much it. So every single dimension we wanted on the top view, we have them here. And they're matching what we see on a drawing. Okay. Click on drawing, click on projected view, and now I want to focus on a front view. So this is the front view. Click on OK, click on annotation and a smart dimension. First, the inner diameter 12, outer diameter 22, that's right. From this left line to this point 110, that's right. From left point or left edge to right edge 125 that's correct the height of this spot should be 15 millimeter that's right the distance between this line and this line should be six that's also correct and i think that's it that's pretty much it the only thing is this fillet and that's two millimeter that's right okay so this is also good click on ok click on drawing projected view and now we go to right view Click on annotation, smart dimension. On the right view, the height of this section should be 20 millimeter, that's correct. And the height of the bus is 15 millimeter. Awesome. And these fill it, of course, two millimeter. Yeah. So as you can see, every single dimensions I'm showing here is matching the relevant di dimension on the drawing. This is showing that our model is correct. We followed drawing. Of course, for the fillet on a top view, there could be different interpretation. Um, I shared what I thought and what makes sense to me. 
and you can see that pretty much everything is okay. And in addition to that, uh, you know that the difference between the answer we found and the final answer is less than 1% is actually 5 thousandths of the person, so we should be good. Okay. Awesome. So I think that's a wrap for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave comments down below. I, I would be happy to read your comments and provide feedback if necessary. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.